How bad could it be? What's up guys, Andrew here on my channel Gear Inc. where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you. And my channel is PC Tech Games and Gear. And today we're answering an old question. Can you use an AMD FreeSync monitor with an NVIDIA GPU? Now the reason you'd want to do this in the first place is that there's something called screen tearing when you're talking about playing video games with high refresh rates. Essentially what happens is the monitor is trying to draw information from the GPU before it's fully rendered resulting in what you call screen tearing, which is exactly what it sounds like. The way they've gone around this is they've developed a proprietary technology, FreeSync on the AMD side of things and G-Sync on the NVIDIA side of things that syncs up the frame so you don't see any of that tearing. Now the issue is that if you wanted to use an NVIDIA GPU, which right now is truly the best option in the graphics card space as an uh, AMD is still overpriced as a residual for mining, and we know that you're not going to be able to get a very high-end GPU from their side outside of Vega until either early 2019 or mid-2019. So that means that you have an NVIDIA GPU, or at least kind of that's your option right now. But you're, if you want to buy a G-Sync monitor, which honestly, if you have never used uh, G-Sync before or FreeSync, I highly advise that you do it because once you do, it's almost impossible to go back. That being said, if you want to use a G-Sync monitor, you're going to be paying on average double what you would be paying for a FreeSync monitor. So is it possible to use FreeSync with an NVIDIA GPU? Because you're not going to be able to use AMD's FreeSync technology, meaning you're not going to be able to sync up the frames. Well, the short answer is yes. However, you are going to risk tearing unless you use another technology that's in most game settings called V-Sync or Vertical Sync. What this does is essentially accomplish the task of linking the frames. Now, the problem is that by enabling this, you can lose up to 50% of your performance or more or cap it at 60 FPS. So what I went out to do today was test and see how much of a performance loss we'd have against uh, five titles that are played heavily in multiplayer and things like that where screen tearing could obviously have a huge impact on your competitive play and whether or not it made more sense to leave V-Sync uh, on or take it off depending on how bad the tearing in the games were. The reason I didn't test games like Dota 2, like a MOBA or RPGs is because obviously uh, screen tearing is something you might be able to put up with if you're playing a game where it's not either going to get you killed. Like in Dota 2, I don't think you would run the risk of that as high as you would in a game, let's say like Fortnite. And then with Skyrim, it's some, one of those things where you could probably put up with it if you had to. So that's kind of the test we laid out today. First off, I had to get myself a FreeSync monitor. And the one I went with was this one from Acer. Um, it was basically the cheapest 144 Hertz panel I could find on Amazon. Uh, that also have FreeSync. And looking at the G-Sync, uh, basically counterpart, you can see exactly why we're doing this video because it's literally $200 more to get the G-Sync variant for NVIDIA. That being said, guys, let's run these tests and uh, we'll kind of go over my thoughts at the end. The first game we are testing is PUBG. Now this is a game that is notorious for being very poorly optimized to begin with. V-Sync is enabled on the image to the right and what you'll notice is that overall um, there's not a ton of difference although we are getting some tearing with uh, V-Sync enabled on the left but obviously we had a huge reduction in our FPS as uh, we are not able to get basically the frames aren't being able to render to the monitor uh, in real time and so we're not able to uh, essentially use the strategy that we wanted to at least in this game. Next up is Fortnite. Now this more than any other game did I notice the tearing in. You'll notice that as we're running this I actually move the camera back and forth on the left on those trees and uh, you'll see that there's actually quite a bit of tearing going on especially with the tree line meets where virtually there's nothing going on on the V-Sync enabled but obviously again we uh, reduced our frames dramatically and so that's something you're gonna have to figure out if you're willing to put up with. Next on our list is CSGO. Now, this is a game that, again, the tearing is going to be fairly noticeable if you know what to look for um, with the V-Sync enabled on the right. Obviously, a much smoother experience. And uh, Counter-Strike is one of those things where you want as many frames as you get, so the tearing might be something that you're willing to put up with, obviously, because you definitely want to be able to have the highest uh, fidelity for those frames when you're doing things like flick shots. Uh, so it's one of those things where I think that leaving V-Sync off on this game would definitely be the way to go. All right, the next game on our list is Battlefield 1, and uh, what's nice is that this game was not affected by V-Sync whatsoever, so even though um, you know we're not necessarily getting the highest FPS period just with the settings that we're using, it's nice to see that even with V-Sync turned on, you're not losing any frames, so this is a game that you guys can pretty much leave V-Sync on, um, and you're not going to get any tearing, and you're not going to be dropping anywhere in your performance. The last game I tested was Overwatch. Now you will notice with V-Sync turned on, we are losing anywhere from about 30 to 50 frames depending on the situation. However, I would actually leave V-Sync on in this game specifically because most of the time I was able to maintain 144 hertz, which is more than enough um, if you're going to be doing competitive gaming. And so it's one of those things where at least for Overwatch, I would leave it on. Well, there you have it, guys. So 
My conclusion is this, should you buy a FreeSync monitor if you have an NVIDIA GPU or plan on getting an NVIDIA GPU? Maybe. It's really hard to say. In some of those games, obviously, the fact that you are capped at 60 FPS isn't a good thing. You're losing out on almost 100 to 150% performance in terms of your FPS, and the tearing wasn't atrocious, but it was something that I noticed. That being said, G-Sync is a feature that I personally endorse and don't believe you should go without if you can afford it. So um, here's my thought. If you're buying a high-end, like 10, 7, or higher, I would spend the money and get yourself a G-Sync monitor, invest it in if you can. However, if you want a high refresh monitor and you do go with something like FreeSync, just know that you are going to have to sacrifice a little bit of performance depending on the title or a lot of performance, but at least you can get a high refresh monitor for the time being. And if you're going to go that route, I would suggest then going with a cheaper monitor because we have no idea what AMD is going to be able to release in the future. So at least that way you're getting the high refresh rate, even if you're not able to get the FreeSync or G-Sync technology. So anyway, Anyway guys, if you like this video, go ahead and leave me a big thumbs up. If you didn't and you hate your life, leave me a thumbs down. Get subscribed, hit that bell icon. YouTube's algorithm continues to screw over YouTube content creators. So make sure that you hit that so you get notifications. As always, thanks to my Patreon and Twitch subs. Guys, you guys have made a huge difference. Thank you so much for your financial support. It makes videos like this entirely possible. So thank you so much. Outside of that, guys, um, it, remember that if you want to buy this monitor, it's going to be linked down below in the description so you can buy this monitor or I'm going to link my monitor that I use. So if you're looking for a G-Sync variant, that's kind of show you kind of, a, again, a cost comparison. But as always, guys, I'm going to make these videos whether you watch them or not, but I hope you do and I hope to see every single one of you next time here on Gear D.